Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. How can you get into cybersecurity without needing any experience? The short answer is no, you cannot and you should not want to. Uh, so shocked, hear me out. I will convince you to why my statement is true. So, wanna hear my long answer? Yeah, of course, otherwise we wouldn't be here, bro. A lot of people dream of becoming a pilot. It's an awesome career with great pay. However, you would be called stupid, irresponsible and naive if you said, let me skip small planes, I will fly in every straight away. You know, I don't get this whole, uh, oh, you have, to, uh, you have to be a pilot, just go get in a freaking plane and get off, it's easy as fuck. No, of course it's not, uh, <laughs> but uh, I will fly into an airbus where you could also jump off of a cliff without a parachute, would not recommend that. You might think it's going to make you reach your destination faster, but well, you get the points left indeed. <laughs> The same applies to cybersecurity. This is an expert pop, something that you specialize in. You are supposed to use your experience to secure a network, device, website, server, or data center. How do you want to secure a firewall if you have never troubleshooted a device like this in a production network? Good question. Really good question. He says, no, a lab is not enough. You need to have hands-on experience, several years as a system engineer, develop a cloud specialist, network engineer, and so on. Remember, a job in cybersecurity is a very rewarding career, but it comes with a lot of responsibilities and duties. If you do not know what you are doing, this is going to be a very stressful experience. And yes, I can definitely say that even if you know what the hell you're doing, this is a stressful experience, believe me. If you do not know what you're doing, this is going to be a very stressful experience. Are you ready to jump into a data center where 55 servers have just crashed and you have 60 seconds to decide what to do because your clients start calling? You better be ready or this is going to be a really bad day for you. I have no idea what I would do in that situation. But Jesus, 55 servers crashing? I mean, just have you tried? Turning it off and on again, that would be my first question, I guess. <laughs> I mean, in 60 seconds, just get the power on it, <laughs> what to do about it. Get a job in IT, any job you can find. Gain some experience and think about cybersecurity as a long-term career goal. Cybersecurity is an advanced field and a solid grasp of the following core IT areas forms the necessary stepping stone towards a successful career in cybersecurity. Operating system, OS, master different operating systems, different types of configurations and security features. Now that's a really good tip because in the wild you're never sure what you're going to come across, right? Are you going to come across Ubuntu? Are you going to come across Fedora, some Windows, um, or maybe even uh, iOS? Who knows? But it's important to have a not a deep-rooted understanding of everything but to at least have some basic experience with it, in my, in my uh, opinion, uh, there. The network administration, understanding network configurations, protocols, and security measures. This is a great one, like Cisco offers a, free, uh, a few free courses, but there are more free courses available for any type of networking stuff that you do. What's important there is that you do some kind of home set, like some kind of cheap firewall that you can find on ebay or whatever just give it a shot and if you don't want to invest in the hardware there's also the packet tracer software that cisco offers which is very useful for emulating this type of behavior very realistic and lifelike so that's a great tip there for programming develop skills and languages like python for security tool development and automation also of course your basic bash programming will always help but knowing programming on a deeper level, knowing how these programs are often created, and we see uh, different layers of an application, how it interacts with database, that's going to give you a great advantage if you ever come across something and you can already make some kind of architectural picture with that from your programming knowledge. What would I recommend there? Maybe start with PHP. A lot of people say don't take PHP because it is so, like, it's almost like a fool's language. You can do anything in there, but you can also make a hell of a lot of mistakes. You can do a hell of a lot of bad job programming. But that's why I say do it. It's not too strict. In the beginning, you don't want to restrict yourself too much. And maybe you might be learning some bad behaviors that way. 
but in my opinion, at least that's my humble opinion, it's better to learn things a bit faster, but not so thorough that you have a broader understanding of what's out there and then you can specialize later on. There's no point in specializing into everything that you come across because then it wouldn't be specializing anymore. You would be a generalist with one specialization, maybe a few specializations. That would be what I would be going for. As for database knowledge, grab database systems and their security aspects. APIs learn about application programming interfaces and their role within system integrations. The architecture there part is important. Again, comes back, understand network and system architectures crucial for cybersecurity, including cloud solutions such as AWS, Azure and Google. Indeed important, but what's also important to realize there is that a while ago, you had all these companies moving to the cloud. These days, they're moving away from it again because they're starting to realize that even though with the dynamic pricing and stuff like that, it is starting to cost them more than just having it in their networks alone. When I examine my CNWPP students, I ask them general questions about security and networks. It is scary sometimes to see that someone can explain a SQL injection in detail, but has no clue how DNS works. The CNWPP uh, certification course is tailored to train and certify you in pen testing. We focus on real world pen testing examples and labs to ensure you gain the skills and knowledge necessary for securing networks and websites. We also do a little, a little bit of API in there. We try to bring some of that architecture up in our courses to give you some, some like a, a little bit of a feeling for it, you know, not the details yet, but a larger overview. Be ready and we will spend today's checking your knowledge in all possible ways, sometimes in tricky ways after our after challenge, give it a go. A little bit of an advertisement for CNWPP there, also sponsored by my own certification, cnwpp.net. I'm going to put a link in the description as well, but if you really think you are ready, why not prove it to yourself? This has no major value in the job market. We do not have things like OSCP where it's largely recognized, but I never wanted to do that. What I wanted to do is give people a certificate that they can prove to themselves that they have a base level understanding of web networks and API together which is going to allow them to move forward there from, but also to give them a little bit of a challenge in terms of management, in terms of how they do their pen testing, in terms of how they do client communications, all of this matters in a pen test. So that's what we tried to do there. Advertisement over. One thing to remember, explain something to somebody as if they were five. If you understand something very well, you will come up with easy to follow examples. Like I did for this topic, I compared cybersecurity to a career in aviation. Not the best comparison ever, but it works. I get it. <laughs> Uh, here is a good example, access control list, think of an ACL as a VIP list for a club. Just like the club's security checks the VIP list to decide who gets access, an ACL in your network specifies which users or devices are allowed or denied access to certain resources. By default, everybody is denied access. That is what we call whitelist based filtering. You have a whitelist and anybody who is on the list gets access, anybody who doesn't gets denied. That club comparison is a little bit better there. If you are not sure what to do next, go to my CNWPP course and learn more. Good luck amazing hackers, thank you very much Marius for the script, really well written. I hope I will see you in the next one, please leave me a bit of a comment about what you think about this format, just interested to know. We could write deeper scripts like this uh, and read them for you in a similar fashion. Hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.